I'm very pleased to announce Nini, who's going to uh, talk to us about copyright and copy fighting. Um, he's the president of the Young Pirates EU. Um, he's very fond of trains, or at least traveling with them, I, I presume. And he has been the youngest person running for Austrian parliament ever, when he was only 18 years and two months. So that's pretty awesome, right? Okay, give him a big round of applause because we are with a few people, so make a lot of noise for Nini! Thank you very much, and also from my side, uh, a warm welcome to my talk about uh, the copy fighters. And um, at first I'm gonna show you once more, this is me, um, this is Nini. Um, my actual name is Bernhard. Um, I come from Austria originally, um, but I live in Sweden nowadays, study international migration in Malmö um, during my daytime. And uh, by night, I also manage um, the agenda of the Young Pirates of Europe. Um, but what is that even? Um, so originally, we were founded as the umbrella organization of um, the different um, national youth organizations of the Pirates parties. Um, we were established in 2013. And um, today, um, this has changed a bit because uh, many of the, the Pirates parties in, in the respective countries aren't that successful anymore or their youth organizations didn't want to <laughs> have anything to do with them. And so um, nowadays we have like a mixed situation where we generally talk about digital rights um, um, with young people. And some of our member organizations are actually like Pirates Party affiliated um, and others are not. Um, as you can see here, uh, we are uh, established in seven countries um, throughout Europe, not only in the European Union. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're happy to grow, hopefully. <laughs> um, so what do we actually do? Um, we mainly organize youth events um, such as summer camps. We have... Um, people gathered somewhere in the woods, and then we talk about some things um, that are related to um, digital rights um, in, in the broad sense. Um, and um, yeah, these are some pictures from a camp that we organized two years ago. Um, but I'm going to talk more about um, the things that we're currently doing this year. Um, and um, basically, last year, we were sitting around thinking about, hmm, can we find some topic that is ex especially relevant um, and that we want to do something about um, this year. And so um, we thought about copyright being the topic and um, started to um, create this copy fighters thing. Um, so the idea was, um, let's get as many people, um, as many young people out there um, together and um, try to find out, oh, there's a massive typo there. Um, try to find out what their problems actually are with copyright, um, and then out of that, um, create the proposal for um, how to reform copyright, and then finally, as a last step, build a campaign around making sure that actually these proposals are at some point being implemented. And so um, we met in Tallinn in Estonia um, in June um, for the first time. We invited uh, up roughly 30 young people um, to come together and um, yeah, talk about these issues. And um, so what we did is we worked in like smaller groups um, and also slacked in smaller groups um, and um, discussed first of all um, where do young people in their daily lives um, actually um, need some form of change with copyright. And we found out that it actually affects young people a lot um, when they try to access culture on the internet, when uh, they want to share things, uh, when, yeah, in, in very different scenarios of their everyday life. And, um, yeah, we were um, together um, making up proposals. We were hearing speakers from different sides and um, try to, yeah, get a better grasp of the whole situation and uh, finally participated in this conference that was going on in Tallinn um, during that time. It's called EuroDig, um, European Dialogue and Internet Governance. It's an obscure um, um, regional conference of the Internet Governance Forum that takes place once a year uh, somewhere in Europe. And um, 
is yeah, a multi-stakeholder um, conference where people get together and talk about some things that are somehow internet-related, and one of those things was also copyright. And um, so, yeah, there's a couple of more pictures. Um, this was at the copyright session um, at, at Eurodig, where we, um, all, all of our participants, uh, went in there and tried to talk with um, all of the other stakeholders in the room about um, our proposals, and we uh, had created this position paper here um, where we had like the most important points that, that we thought um, copyright um, reform has to bring us um, to, to be able to um, yeah, uh, gr grow um, culture on the internet, but also um, the understanding of young people um, of, of like uh, this whole ecosystem. And so um, the most important point that we, the most important points that we, we figured out, you can actually find this position paper in more detail on our website, uh, copyfighters.eu. Um, so the first point we talked about was territoriality. We think um, in a internet connected society with um, the internet enabling every one of us to share culture uh, across borders, um, there should not be, um, yeah, um, unreasonable borders put up on the internet where they actually do not exist. And so we think that as a first step, um, there should be a European-wide um, single copyright that is everywhere the same. Um, so you also get one license for the whole European Union. Um, and um, as a second step, this should be broadened as far as possible until there is a global ecosystem in place. Um, that would also lead to the end of geoblocking, which is an important part uh, that we, that we um, focused on. There should be no borders when trying to um, access content on or offline. Um, we talked about a lot about uh, fair use. Um, so we want that there should be an exception um, for general use of cop uh, copyrighted materials um, in a way that users can... Um, can, yeah, um, that the, the, the rights that the users currently have, for example, for educational purposes or for um, um, uh, satire or s s something like that, um, that this will not, is not focused on like one specific, uh, specific technology, but rather that um, it will always be applicable um, no matter which technology is actually being used. Um, we are strictly against content filtering. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, remix culture and um, that there is a need for a legalization of basic things like memes or reaction GIFs or stuff like that. Um, all of them are currently operating in a legal gray zone or would be, uh, if you put it strictly, illegal because um, in many countries in the EU, for example, there are no exceptions for um, this use of small snippets. And so uh, we think that is deeply necessary. Um, we also had a debate about open access, um, meaning that there should be um, f open access to um, scientific materials, especially if it's publicly funded. Um, and last but not least, we also talk about an especially pressing issue, which I'm going to come back um, in a second again, uh, which is the ancillary right for press publishers, which um, is a proposal that is being di discussed today in the EU. Um, and so we had all of these um, issues bundled together in this position paper and um, had like uh, relevant discussions about those things. Um, but we felt that there was a need to adapt all of these things and to focus on smaller parts um, because most of these things are unachievable in um, yeah, the current ecosystem that we're operating in. And so we had a follow-up event to this, uh, which was also a summer camp um, two weeks ago. And we thought, how can we take all of this output that we created before that and uh, make sure that there are some forms of changes in actual leg legislations um, to, to accommodate those things. And so we met somewhere in the Swedish woods, um, namely um, in Jöransborg somewhere in, in, in southern Sweden. Um, this lovely scout's house um, was, was filled with 60 young people that were interested in this topic. And um, so what we did also there, uh, we had lots of discussions together 
We um, invited excellent speakers on issues like freedom of panorama, and um, we worked together out uh, which are the key issues that we want to talk about, um, which are actually currently relevant in the EU copyright reform debate. And so the th three things that we deem especially relevant are um, the legalization of user-generated content, as I talked before. Um, remix culture should be something that is definitely allowed, that is definitely OK, and uh, that everyone comes behind and, and agrees upon that users should be able to um, generate content based on um, other people's works. Um, there should be no automated content filtering, so there should be no um, for example, YouTube has this content ID system where they automatically scan all of the things that are being uploaded. And um, there is no good appeal mechanism to that. So basically, the, even if there's very small snippets of, of um, copyrighted materials in there, which might actually be legal because um, there might be an exception granting you um, the, the right to actually use that, um, it will be taken off because the automated solution, the algorithm says no. And um, so we are strictly against that. Uh, and the same thing uh, goes for the link tax, which is um, another way to describe the ancillary copyright that I was talking before earlier. So um, the idea of the Leistungsschutzrecht, um, which how it's called in German, or ancillary right for press publishers in English, um, is that press publishers, in addition to their normal rights, um, well, the rights that the authors have on the works, um, that they're writing the articles and so on and so forth, um, the press publishers should also have a right on snippets um, of these works. So for example, the title. Um, and um, this is um, targeting things like Google News. Um, it was introduced in the first place in Germany and in Spain already. Um, and in both cases, it was advertised by lawmakers as um, a, a way to tax Google. Um, because the idea behind it is that um, if you use these snippets, for example, in Google News, then you have to get a license for that and most likely will have to pay for that. Um, in practice, it has devastating effects on the internet ecosystem as a whole. Um, there is the problem that on the one hand, you, um, not only Google is using snippets, everyone is using snippets all of the time. If you share a Facebook post, um, there will be a short uh, snippet on your Facebook page, and you actually would infringe that um, ancillary right by putting up this, um, th this snippet or this Facebook post. Um, the same could also go, for example, for links. Most of the time, um, especially with news publishers, um, the title of, a work, of an article is actually part of, of the link itself for search engine optimization purposes. And so maybe the link itself is actually also covered under that law because there is actually a snippet of the th uh, article title in there and, and things like that. So these three topics are actually things that might be achievable or, or, on the other end, are actually threatening us currently in, in the EU copyright debate. So user-generated content would be a positive thing that we could achieve together, whereas the other two are, are about to be implemented and someone has to stop them. And so we further sat together and made some popcorn and ate it and other food as well and um, had some more discussions with some more interesting people um, and had some campfires. And then we came up with an idea for an online campaign um, to address all of these things. So we um, yeah, made sketches of a website. We uh, actually designed this already, but it's not online yet. It will be soon. And we also made this short video, which I'm going to show you, hopefully, about all of these issues. And the internet is gone. OK, maybe I can come back to this later, if the internet allows it. Ah, that sucks a little bit, because it's a very motivating video. Um, and it would perfectly lead to the next point, where the question is how you can actually get active 
to, to influence all of these things. And so, um, first of all, you can go to copyfighters.eu, um, get informed about all of those things that I was talking about earlier, but also um, it, there are, it's an easy step to sign up so you get updates uh, about our campaign, and um, we will actually make sure that you will be able to spread the word about these things um, on, a, on that website. Um, and if you're motivated to help some more, um, you can also join us um, helping with more things. For example, this website that I was talking about earlier, uh, it's about to be launched, but there are many, many things to be done around that. Uh, so we're looking for people who can help us there. Um, we're, we're also looking for help with social media and stuff like that. But um, we're also organizing a launch event. Um, yes, I said launch event. Um, we're going to invite um, 30 young people for a prolonged weekend in Brussels. Um, so from the 6th to the 9th of September. Um, and we're going to visit the EP to talk to some of our representatives and um, also some other um, stakeholders in the field about copyright reform. Um, and we're going to have a launch party. And um, basically, we're inviting you, if you're sitting there and are under 30, which is not that many of you, I think, in this case. But <laughs> yeah, trying to be charming here. Um, but in case that actually you are my target group, then you should go there and sign up for it. It's going to be fun. Um, and we're paying for things, um, so that's also nice. Um, and if there's any more questions, then I shall have the answers to this. Um, also, this is luckily funded by, by um, the Councils of Euro uh, Council of Europe uh, and the European Youth Foundation. Um, and this wouldn't have been possible without their support. But I'm going to try to um, set up the internet uh, once more. And um, yeah, if there's any questions, then please shoot. Otherwise, I'm going to quickly try to get connected <laughs> and show you the video. Mm. I would like to add that we did check this prior to his presentation and that it did work right before his presentation, so. Well, it does no longer, unfortunately. Um. Does uh, someone in the audience know a nice joke in the meanwhile? <laughs> Perhaps? Yeah? There you go. Thank you. Um, I work in the European Parliament for uh, MEP Julia Rida, the pirate MEP in the Parliament, uh, who is at the forefront of working against these bad copyright reform plans that are going to be enacted if we don't stop them. Like Nini said, just to remind you, this like extra copyright for news sites, which would make linking harder, and the obligation for internet platforms to surveil all your uploads and find copyrighted content in there, uh, the content filtering. Uh, and I'm going to do a workshop tomorrow on how we can practically help stop that. So what Nini and his crew are doing is extremely important. There are also some other campaigns running. And I want to discuss with whoever is interested in, in getting active on this topic tomorrow um, what we can do to stop it. And um, it's in the schedule. It's an official schedule. I think it's scheduled for 12.20 or 12 o'clock or something. Check the schedule. 
Uh, it has copyright in the title. Um, so I hope you come to the workshop if you want to change something about this. The timeline is that there's a, par a vote in the European Parliament in October, probably. Um, and so we need to get started to mobilize against this. We're trying for another rerun. Yeah, have you tried turning it off and on again? Yes, a question or a joke or... So, what is, is there a direct relation between this youth organization and the pirate party as I know it from this sort of international movement of pirate parties? Um, so, yes and no, there is a historical connection at least. Um, so, we've been founded like as a federation of youth organizations that were affiliated with the pirate party. And currently, it, like we're discussing this whole in, in our organization, like how to move forward because some of our member organizations, um, especially like the German one, um, like don't want to work together or, or aren't capable of working or yeah, don't have a relationship with their pirate party anymore. And this affects many of our member organizations. So basically it affects also like us as a federation. Um, and we're not sure how to move forward, but we'll see. But currently we're technically still somewhat affiliated with the pirate party, yes. We might not be for long. It, there's loading something. Yeah, they constantly tell us to use more bandwidth, but this is not helping, right? Success. I'm not sure if there should be audio there. Yes, there should be audio there. <laughs> There's an audio person coming around, I think. Front, left, front, right. Yeah, I'm, front, I'm front, like trying left, to play a test front, thingy, front, but it front, doesn't do anything. Left. Sorry? I'm on the highest volume setting. Ah, now I'm on the very highest, 200%. Using a way that can potentially censor. Content filters are dangerous. They're processing it in a way that's obscure and that I know nothing about. I think it's a scary and fairly Orwellian idea. I think it's stupid. They can be used in a way that can potentially censor important information. It might be copyright today, but what is it going to be next? Is it going to be fake news? Is it going to be censoring robust but challenging political speech? For me, it's a slippery slope too far. lots of people that have been limited and I, I know of accounts that have been deleted and although sometimes it was justified other times it wasn't. It needs to be very clear where, for what I could be sued and for what I could not and it needs to be based on clear real rules about fair use of content. User-generated content is what makes the internet that we use every day great. I do have to think about copyright a lot when doing cover songs as an 
artist. That is what the internet is about. It is about expressing robust, challenging, yet lawful views and communicating them not just to our friends, not just to our family, but to mass audiences. A good copyright for <laughs> Perfect timing. Okay, I think we're back to the state of no internet. Sorry? I'm on the official Wi-Fi. I never actually found yours. Yes. <laughs> A good copyright reform can open up the open up the internet for the end user. And that copyright is not always the way to deal with the internet. What I would love to see is a harmonized copyright framework across all of the EU member states that enables this, that allows for a free and open internet to prosper, that allows for more of the same internet invariants that have made the internet what it is today. I see the same possibilities as I see in the internet as a platform. I, uh, that is uh, an opportunity for educators, activists and creators and foremost democracy to prosper. And I think that is exactly what we need. So, so having copyright to be fair so it's equal between the content owners and the users and not heavily one-sided on the content owners and their extremely well-off bosses and lawyers well, if you think about, you know, the, the way humans evolved and you think about the tribal villages, everybody shared every new technology and idea. That was the way we survived and that's how we evolved. So I think like through good copyright reform, we could get some something a bit more organic. Our culture could evolve faster. I'm Victor. My name is Michaela. I am Michael Moriarty. Hi, I'm Karl I'm Aidan Bodelin. I'm Elettra. I'm Mira Salmela. You will join the Okay, cool. I think this is um, the end, um, because actually this was planned to be somewhere in between the talk. Um, <laughs> no, 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 let's stop that. No. <laughs> shit, shit. It's gone. That would actually have been quite funny. Are there any questions? And if they are, could you please ask them in the mic that is standing over there? because this session is recorded, so. So are you also trying to make like easier laws because like mostly the problem is like laws are only understandable for lawyers. So they like, you always have to have a lawyer to like know what the situation is. Uh, are you trying to work on making them easier to understand for like normal people? So yes and no, like obviously like if I could implement the law, it would look very, very different from how it looks today, um, but I can't. So like we have to work with what's actually reality surrounding us. And 
while we have in, in like the first steps of this whole thing tried to figure out what would be like the, the perfect solution, uh, we're now back to um, what is actually like in front of us. And it doesn't look like there will be an understandable like for everyone copyright law in the EU anytime soon. But we're we're getting there. Like it, it's small steps and like we have to fight for all of these small steps, but um, it's going to get better. Are there any more? Yeah, please uh, step to the mic. Thanks. Isn't one of the, the biggest problems, um, like the previous person said, you know, laws are only understandable by lawyers. Isn't it that the... Um, the challenges of copyright in the digital domain are not understood by lawyers and lawmakers and is there something we can possibly do to uh, remedy that, to help them understand how the digital domain works, the internet works, sharing of content, etc. Yes, um, so like making lawmakers understand things is like the way how we can actually influence things. And so every, each and every one of us should be talking to their actual representatives in parliaments, but also in your governments, um, and talk to them about these issues at hand. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the thing that works the best is actually talking from your perspective as a user, um, as their voter, maybe even, um, and, and telling them why they are wrong on some of the things that they believe are necessary. Are there any more questions? Will you, uh, then I will ask you a question. Will you be staying at the camp for a couple of days? Yes, I will be here at least until Sunday. Okay, at least until Sunday. And where can people find you if you have some, uh, some questions tomorrow maybe? Um, I'm hanging out like 50% of the time at the, the Austrian village over there. Okay. Ah, 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 too many ahs. <laughs> um, I, I haven't like actually counted them. Okay, so you can be found there if uh, people exactly. have some more questions. Other than that, you can also find me on Twitter or send me an email or somehow else. Like, if you, if you try any of these contact means, I will be there until Sunday and we'll be able to find you somewhere else. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you too. Thank you.